Okay, so we have so now we have a patient. We've um, we've come up with a, a surgical plan. Um, let's say we decide to go new adjuvant, even though Dave really wanted to operate on her. But let's say we go new adjuvant. What's our what's our chemo? Of choice. How, how, what, yeah, what do we do? You know, I, I still go back to there's been many a di different data. You know, you've, we've looked at ICON 8, we've looked at 262, we've looked at GOG 218, ICON 7. At the end of the day, it really boils down to a paclitaxel and, and carboplatinum. The question of BEV is, is a good question here because here we have a 44 year old, stage 4, um, you know, high risk, generally healthy individual. So mm -hmm. we would ask ourselves the question is this the person that you might want to incorporate bifacism? And if you did, what data could you draw on mm -hmm. to actually? substantiate that opinion. Um, so it's a good question, to be honest with you. I mean, if you look at GOG 218 and ICON-7, um, you know, we, we had a progression-free survival benefit in GOG 218. But if you look at more the modified ICON-7 um, and looked at specific cohorts, for example, you know, suboptimally debugged stage 3 patients, uh, all stage 4 patients, um, they had a conglomerate of about patient population of about 502 patients. And mm -hmm. they did actually see a benefit of bevacizumab in that cohort. So here you have a 44-year-old woman who is young, no other comorbidities by presumption, um, who we're going to un undergo neoadjuvant therapy, despite mm -hmm. the fact that maybe the a distance of opinions. I can't, I can't, argue, can't argue, I can't argue that, that, that you know, much. Would you give her the benefit of the doubt of putting Bev, you know, relying and leaning on the data of the modified icon I, mean, I don't think it's unreasonable if done right. Yeah. The problem in the United States is, is it's not approved unless they've had surgery. So, you know, I think, I think for those patients, I'm more apt to start the doublet. Um, and then if they're not responding uh, 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 or, or their ascites isn't drying up, then potentially appealing mm -hmm. uh, to have that approved. Um, so it, normally when we do that with neoadjuvant, then we're going to bring the BEV in afterwards. I agree. It gets very complicated in terms of mm -hmm. when to start, when to host. So how many cycles are you really giving in the right. new adjuvant setting? Honestly, at yeah. the end of the day, you're really looking at one or two cycles. You might run yourself into more complications than it's worth at the right. upfront. Understood. So I like what Dave said. I, I do that often where yeah. I start the chemo and then if I'm not seeing the benefit that I want, maybe add the, the bevacizumab. And I would just add the, the sub-analysis of 218 was pretty compelling where you saw the stage fours Four of, patients, yeah. look similar to stage threes and those patients that received the bevacizumab as far as survival was concerned, all ad hoc and subset and whatnot. But yeah. but still, yeah. that, you know, you're looking for something, right, to help guide your But it's a really decision. important point you brought up also, which is you, you, you have to give time after the bev before you take them to surgery. Mm -hmm. And, and, yeah, and to say, make sure you're holding that prior to the cycle. I really like to get them eight weeks without BEV, but, but I think six weeks is probably more realistic. Yeah, right, right. So how many cycles before, how many cycles after? So, <laughs> you know, I generally give three, um, but, you know, certainly three to four is, is reasonable. You, you know, at that point, you want to take a look. You want to see if you're getting any benefit because if you're getting past three or four and you're still not going to be able to take that patient mm -hmm. to surgery, the, the chance that she's going to have a good outcome has really been diminished. Mm -hmm. And we, I think in, our, in our, our database, and we look at the three versus the six, I think I didn't, there wasn't as much of a difference as I had no, thought there was No, there wasn't was as much, be. but there was a slight yeah. difference. And yeah. I think in, in some other retrospective studies, it's been, you know, a significant difference. That's right. Difference. So Nicoletta Colombo did this That's nice right, study, yeah. and she had actually, you know, looked at number of cycles pre and, and basically showed that there was this kind of law of diminishing returns. The more pre-cycles pre that you gave, the less well the patients did. But some of that's also selection, right? Because the patients that immediately respond, you take the surgery after yeah. three. Well, you somewhat know. selection, exactly right. yeah. somewhat selection, but, mm -hmm. but a take home point is, is unless there's a reason, three to four cycles prior to surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, the, we're seeing a lot of our patients uh, in consult, mm -hmm. but they're already getting sick. They've already had it. Yeah. And so your, your, your options are really limited. They, right. they have to be evaluated by a GYN oncologist uh, prior to that three to four cycles to get to the uh, interval debulking. And just to interject, I mean, after the three to four cycles, what do you use as a surgeon? As a, What criteria do you use in terms of taking them to surgery? We look at chemo responsiveness as yeah. the first and foremost, but there, are there any other criteria? Do you look at CA125 trend and the like? I mean, I think you look at the whole The thing. picture as a whole, yeah. You know, I mean, we I, we tend to use a lot of resist just because that's what we do with all the other trials. And so using that type of idea, but that can be difficult because sometimes it's just that peritoneal carcinomatosis that's not really measurable. So you just have to get a sense of why didn't you take her to surgery up front and are those problems gone now? Mm -hmm. So if it was a performance status issue, you know, how yeah. does she look in front of you right, right. now? If, if it was a disease, disease location, yeah. then, you know, have things shrunk? Have they shrunk enough? You know, is there still quite a bit of disease that would be residual after surgery? So say they had, you know, bulky adenopathy in the mediastinum. 
when do you take that patient to surgery? Yeah. It's such wells, a yeah. troublesome. Yeah, Sorry, no, I'm agreeing. Yeah. But you know, those are the kind of no, things no, you have to weigh right. yeah. when we're trying to decide. Okay.